One of the most intriguing lift types is the cascade lift, often called the elevator lift. Perhaps the interest is in the compact nature of the lift. Perhaps it is the simple linear motion. But maybe it's simply how complex the lift is to make, and how difficult it is to understand how the linkage itself works. I'm Caden here from Kepler Electronics, and let's get into it. At its simplest, a cascade lift is simply two or more linear slides which, when connected using chain or something else like string, move up in series. In this example, I will be building a cascade lift that is not necessarily ready for competition, but it does provide an easy way to understand the mechanics of the lift. To start, you'll need to make a base. Here's my base, simply two pieces of C-channel with a sprocket at the top. Attached off to one side are two small pieces of C-channel with interior slides. I'm choosing to use interior slides here because it's pretty hard to actually rip the rails from them when compared to using the exterior slides. To attach an interior slide, you simply thread a screw into the undersized holes. Now that we have the base done, we need to build the first stage. To do this, we first take two linear rails and attach them with standoffs. We then need to take and attach two bearings with three washers apiece. On the outside go pieces of C-channel. Standoff to these are two more pieces of C-channel which have the slides on them. The reason we use the bearings is so that we can use the sprocket here. After assembling this, we need to slide it onto the base, after which we install two more bearing flats and then another sprocket on the other side. We then need to build a third stage. You can simply copy the previous stage and keep stacking them, but I'm going to stop here, so I'll build a simple slide set that doesn't have the extra C-channel. After adding one sprocket, slide it on and add another set of bearing flats and sprocket at the bottom. That's the whole assembly right there, and you can see that it can extend. If they get caught on anything here, check that the screws going into the slides aren't extending too far in that they get caught in the holes in the rails. The real question here is how to power it. That's where the chain comes in. You need a lot of chain here. I like to start with the end. Zip tie it to one of the standoffs and then start wrapping it around. Loop it over one sprocket, weave it back to the other side and around the lower sprocket, then over the top sprocket of the stage below. Keep doing this until you reach the end, then pull. You should see the stages start to ascend. Now that we have a working linkage, it's time to power it. There are several ways, but I'm going to go with a single sprocket at the bottom that's powered. Now this is by no means the best method to power it, but this is a very simple method that shows how the entire linkage works. The end of the chain is zip tied to a sprocket, which is set off the back of the base so as to not conflict with any of the other sprockets on the different stages. The motor in question is a normal 200 RPM motor, which simply turns this sprocket. The chain loops around it and the lift goes up. It has a bit of trouble coming down, but that's more a function of not enough weight on the lift and too much friction due to the VEX slides, but that shouldn't be a problem once an intake is added on. So let's talk about exactly how this mechanism works. The basic gist is that when the chain at the base is pulled, it pulls the chain tight, and the only areas where the chain can get tighter is between the stages. So it pulls the sprockets closer together and thus pulls the stages upward. There is a theoretical limit of 50 pounds on this chain according to VEX, but I find it to be much lower than that. You could fix this by using multiple strands of chain to spread the load, but the easiest thing is probably to prevent the chain from having any twisting ability, as that's the easiest way to break this chain. Now, there are a few things to note. One, you don't need to use sprockets. You can simply use spacers that the chain runs over, but I chose to use sprockets to better illustrate the motion that makes this lift work. Another thing to note is that you can get better performance due to lower friction by not using the VEX slides. This is normally accomplished by using C-channel and some modified spacers, but that's outside the scope of this video so I won't be covering it here. But expect to see something on my channel about making some in the future. Another option for powering the mechanism is to run a continuous loop of chain throughout the whole mechanism. This is an option if you don't want to go with spooling around the sprocket. This can cause some problems depending on how your intake is mounted, but I'm mentioning it here because it's another part of the lift design. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video demystified the cascade lift. It's surely an interesting lift type to build, and it definitely has its uses. If you like this, be sure to check out my video on Double Reverse 4 Bars, which is another lift type that you might find interesting. I also compete in combat robotics, so be sure to check out my video going over the CAD of my upcoming Antweight, Blastwave 2. Thanks again for watching, and keep designing.